Hello, welcome to Texas Cooking Today. On this episode, I wanted to talk to you about heating the pan. You know, you've seen me do this before. On a lot of my videos, if you've watched any of my videos, you've seen me heat the pan. I always heat the pan dry. But if you'll notice, there's one thing about heating the pan that I do, very specific. It's always heated on the temperature I'm cooking at. Now let's say I'm frying, all right? Let's say I'm gonna deep fry, all right? I've got at least an inch of oil or more. So I've got it on my burner. I'm heating it up. Now I'm not gonna heat that on high because then my heat distribution on the bottom of the pan is going to be off. Okay, now what I mean by off is it won't be in the right spot so that when you reach the right temperature and you lower the temperature, then your heat's hitting a different spot. It's going to have to heat that to its maximum temperature and then even out, which means you're going to be turning the temperature up and then down, or rather down, then back up a little, then back. So you, you're, you're playing with the temperature all the time. Instead of learning the temperature that it normally cooks right at and heating it at that temperature, when I'm frying at uh, 325 to 350 degrees, I heat on medium high and I leave it there because when I'm frying, it's going to pull heat from that pan and I want to need it to revive real well. So a medium high is really good. But at the same time, if it was high, it wouldn't be right. So let me explain. First off, we're going to talk about both gas stoves as well as electric. When you're heating something on first, a gas stove, whether it be propane or natural gas, or if you're in certain countries, uh, methane, natural uh, made methane, then it's all the same, folks. When the flame is too high, it pushes outward. And so you're heating the outer edge of the pan. Instead of heating the center of the pan, you get a cold spot in the middle and you get hot edges. A, you got uneven heat that's going to be harder to cook that way. B, you have a pan that is e unevenly heated and it can cause delamination and warping. Now, delamination is where you have a clad pan like this and the inside bows up and the outside remains flat or vice versa. The outside bows away from the inside and so they become separated and it's not heating properly after that. And that was because it was heated wrong. Okay, it was heated uneven. It was heated at too high of a temperature. All right, so when you're heating a pan, we use lower temperatures, medium to medium high, and that way we get our heat into the center of the pan. Now, in the event that you want to have some fun in the comments and say, hey, Chef Trotter, professional chefs always heat their pans on high. You're right, they do. What's the difference? The difference is the burner, okay? This is a burner that puts out a single ring of fire that pushes outward, okay? The higher you get it, the more outward it pushes. The smaller or lower you get it, the more it pulls in, okay? And it, and it pushes up more that way. That's just in the nature of gas cooking. We're gonna get into electric in a minute, but in the nature of gas cooking, it does that. So you can get this uneven heat thing going on. So if you're heating at the right temperature, it's heating the right spot on the pan. So it'll be heating in the center here rather than on the outer edge or in the very middle. You're wanting halfway between the middle and that edge. And when you're heating that little spot, you get even heat spread outward and inward and you're heating the whole pan evenly. You also don't run the risk of it bowing, buckling, separating on you. That's no fun. Okay, so you look in for that. Now, back to that commercial burner. Single ring. Commercial burners have two rings. They have an outer set of uh, flames that come up, and then there's an inner set. And that's big old octagonal burners that have holes drilled around the outside and holes drilled around the inside. And so it puts out two rings of fire. So when you're in a commercial kitchen, it's all about speed. You gotta heat the pan fast. So you're heating it evenly across the whole bottom with a lot more gas. It's a way hotter burner. The stoves in commercial kitchens are supplied with much larger lines that are ran at a higher pressure. It's a commercial pressure rather than what they do residentially. Okay, so it's a whole different game. 
So you can't really compare commercial or in a professional kitchen to home cooking and what's going to be happening on that stove. Now the next thing is electric. What happens when I put this on an electric burner, turn it on high and heat it up? Well, electric burners get even hotter than the gas burners. No, it's true. Electric heat is way hotter. That's how they melt steel in uh, foundries and factories in order to uh, make steel uh, uh, sheets and castings and things like that. They have to first melt that metal and they do it with an electric arc. It's an electric arc furnace and it's amazing how they work. They're very loud and extremely hot. But that electric heat is much faster. In other words, it comes up in temperature really quick as much hotter than the gases. So the gas will be burning at a certain temperature, but that electric's a lot hotter and it heats the pan unevenly. Okay, so let's say I put this down on an electric burner and I put it on high. Well, the bottom of that pan is going to get really hot really fast while the inside is heating slower. And then suddenly you see the pan bowed out on the outside and you put your pan down on the, the, the stove and instead of it sitting flat like this does, it's, it's, it's rolling and wobbling around on you because it's bowed out. This may have happened to you at some point. It's common for single wall pans used on electric stoves to bow or to warp, okay? They bow outward. And that is because of the intense heat distribution hitting one side of the metal while the other side's still cold. It causes the hotter side to, the, the, the molecules in the uh, hotter side to push outward. Well, as they push outward, they need a place to go. They can't go anywhere, so they flex away from the pan and it causes that bottom to bow. That's what's happening there. And it can happen on gas stoves, though a little less often than it happens. More often on the gas stove, it's an uneven heat. So I've heated it on high, I've, I've got the outer edge of the pan hot, but the center's not so hot. And if I'm shallow frying and I put my meat in there, suddenly the edges of the meat, the ends of the meat are overcooked and the middle doesn't have enough sear on it. Why? Because of uneven heating. This is the reason I teach people to put water in that pan and find out if the pan is hot enough. And the water will tell you if there are cold spots on the bottom of the pan. When you pour cold water in a hot pan that's heated sufficiently, the water will beat up and just go bouncing around in there and it won't sizzle at all. That's when it's hot enough to get even searing. So that's the thing is you want to heat it at the right temperature. If I'm gonna cook it medium, then I heat the pan on medium. If I'm gonna cook at a medium high, like if I'm gonna cook a steak, I heat the pan at a medium high. And the next thing is also matching the pan to the burner. This you see easily on an electric stove because the burner is large or small, but it is a little less noticeable on stoves like this. Although gas stoves sometimes do have different size burners, this one, has four different sizes of burners. There's a small, medium, medium, large, and then my jumbo burner in the middle that's a pot boiler, okay? And it does it fast. So I've got a one burner that's as hot as commercial, but it's, again, single ring of flame instead of double. So I have to be careful what I put on there. I put big items on, uh, like large, large skillets, bigger than this one. This skillet I would use on a medium, small, or a medium, large, uh, burner, but I wouldn't put it on the small burner and I wouldn't put it on the largest because it's not that big, nor is it that small. A pan like this is going to need a small burner. If you put this on a big burner, well, you're going to have problems again, overheating the outside of the pan and the handle. Plus you're wasting electricity. You've just got heat going up in the air and it's not doing anything. So if it's gas stove, your burner is probably pushing outside of the bottom altogether. And an electric stove, if it's on too large of a burner, you're just wasting heat to the air. Don't do that. There's what I have to say on this part of this. Now, I didn't have a, a pan with a warped bottom and I didn't have an electric cooktop to show you here. However, I do have family nearby. Let's go and take a look at my brother's stove 
And I think he has an older pan that I asked him to save. I asked him to save it because it had that bowing on the outside. And uh, sure enough, he did. He's got another pot he showed me that has an even bigger problem. This other pot's a single wall pot. And he says when he heats it, it bows out even more than it's already bowed out. And the only way to get contact to the burner is to press the pot down to even that burner back out again, that metal that's distorting. He has to push it back down to get the right heating. I said, we need to just get rid of that pot and get you some bottom clad pots so you get good flat contact. Folks, that extra layer of cladding really makes a difference. It truly does, and it's worth the extra money, all right? So consider that. Uh, please heat carefully. Let's go over to my brother's. Let's take a look. Come on. I've come to my brother's house. Um, I wanted to come to his house because he has a kind of stove that helps me to explain this. All right, this is an electric stove. It's got the heating elements underneath the glass top here. The same way that an electric stove has a heating element above it, this one's just reverse, it's just got it below it, and they work the same. The thing of it is, is when you're heating a pan, this type of stove produces an extraordinary amount of heat, and it does it very, very fast, okay? So what happens is you have a single wall pan, like this is a single wall pan here, and this one also, you have something that's a single wall pan, very well made though. Either of these pans, and this one, if you'll notice, has a little bit of movement in it, and that was from being heated on electric stove. That's being heated at high temperature on electric stove does that. And it'll do it to most pans that are not bottom clad. And even bottom clad can be separated or buckled on this type of stove because of the power that they have to heat. Okay, so they produce an extraordinary amount of heat and they do it really fast. So what you gotta be careful about there is when you're heating, let's say I'm gonna heat this pan and cook in it at a medium temperature. That means I'm gonna set the stove at a medium temperature and heat the pan that way. The pan takes longer to heat, yes, but the reason you're getting that buckling is because of how fast it's heating. You got too much here and nothing going on up here and between hot and cold, it causes the metal to warp outward. All right, and this is just the way metals work. All right, and some pans like this, my brother was telling me when he uses this pan, because of the way it, it kind of rolls around on here, that when he heats it, the bottom actually bows out even more than it is now. And that it, the only way he gets good contact is when he pushes straight down on it. And I can feel it. There's a kind of a springiness to it there. And, and that's when he gets full contact and gets good boiling on it. Okay, so what you have happening here is, number one, single wall pans and thin pans, they're going to be more prone to this, plain and simple. That's the reason you hear people like me and other professionals tell you, go with good pants, get a bottom clad pan, minimum. That's what they use in the commercial industry. Fully clad's wonderful, but not all of us can afford it. When it comes to a stove like this also, regardless of the pan that you get, reduce that temperature when heating. It doesn't require full power to heat the pan to the right temperature that you need or to bring it up to a boil. Start heating your water on a lower temperature and then bring up that temperature a little bit later to bring it to a boil. That way you don't have this, this heat differential going on on your pans. Number one, you, you protect the investment on your pans. Number two, you get better cooking action. You don't have a pan that rocks or wobbles around like this and you end up with just a better situation. Okay, so it doesn't have a lot to do with gas or electric. It has to do with, with how high that flame is. And you've seen me over the years when I heat my pan, let's say, to cook a steak in it. Well, I cook a steak at a medium high temperature. So I heat the pan at a medium high temperature. And the size of the burner matters because I'm looking at the, the flame pattern on my gas. Well, you don't get a flame pattern on electric, but you do get burner size options, okay? And that is a biggie, all right? Don't put little pans on big burners and turn on the big burner to heat the little pan. It's not gonna heat it any faster. In fact, it'll probably be less efficient for you. And when you start learning to heat at the right temperature, you're going to love your pans that much more and you're gonna love cooking that much more. So it's really simple. The flat surface like this, it really shows, as you can see, when you have this kind of an issue going on, 
And here we have a pan. This is a very good quality pan. This is an upper, uh, this is a, a good line of pans. But even in expensive pans, you can have this problem right here. You see that? And it's a very unfortunate thing because then you have a, a, a nice pan you paid money for that's bent on the bottom and you can't fix that. All right. Um, so keep the temperature under control, get the pan on the right size burner. If I were to heat this larger pan at a high temperature on a smaller size burner, it's going to cause me some serious warping in the center. Where if I heat it at a lower temperature on a wider burner, I'm going to get a more even heat and a lot less chance that it's going to bow outward like this. Please remember that. And another thing, Richard wanted me to remind you that when you've got a stove top like this, it's different from other stove tops, these glass tops. They're slick. If you slide a pan across it, they can slide easily, okay? On my stove, I have to force it across there because I got that heavy iron grate, you know? So you have that steel pan that doesn't want to slide across it. I've got a lot of friction. But on this, you got almost none. Now, where does that matter? Well, if you've got a pan like this and it's halfway full with oil, it's real easy to slosh that oil. And then suddenly you got hot oil on a hot cooktop and that ain't a good combination. So please be very careful about the slickness of it also. Um, let's go and take a look at the other pans. As you can see, yeah, there's a difference between the electric and the gas, but it's not substantial when it comes to the right way and wrong way to heat a pan. Some folks are going to keep heating their pan on high every time. And folks, I feel bad for you because you're really shortchanging yourself. Um, when you start doing it the right way, you'll see a big difference in the way things come out in your cooking. Uh, and the difference in how much time you save, heating it on high versus heating it on medium or medium high, yeah, that's about three, maybe four minutes for the whole meal. Uh, it's not a, so much time saved that it's worth bothering with to mess up the quality of your food. There is one thing I'll mention, single wall pans. There are some kinds of single wall pans that are absolutely tough as nails and they're very hard to work. Not impossible, but hard. Let me show you. Uh, this one, here we go. Okay, this big old heavy guy. This is what they call um, carbon steel. It weighs a ton, okay? It's very heavy, it's very durable. This is about, oh, I'd say an eighth of an inch or more all the way across, so it's a very heavy pan. Um, in fact, I can't lift this with one hand. It, it hurts me too much, hurts my arthritis too. But uh, fact is, very heavy, very good quality. Now, these are harder to warp, so if you wanted to use a single wall pan still and not have to worry about it, look at the carbon steel pans. They do have a shortcoming. The shortcoming that you find with carbon steel is the same as with cast iron, which by the way, cast iron's wonderful also. The problem that you have with both of those is that they have a tendency to rust, okay? And you need to keep them seasoned. Seasoned means to keep a nonstick coating that's created by, um, basically carbonizing oil against the pan. We polymerize the oil by heating it, turns it uh, uh, into basically carbon molecules that get bonded to the pan, and it makes a very hard, strong, durable finish that, that holds up for a long time. But that's another video that'll be coming up soon. And in fact, it'll be that pan right there. So we won't sweat that. In the meantime, I'd like to say thank you very much for watching. Slow down how you heat your pans. Never heat the oil in the pan unless you're deep frying. Um, never heat something in the pan unless you're like boiling or deep frying or something like that, unless you have to heat the fluid. But if it's shallow frying, just heat the pan dry, works better. Also heat it at the same temperature you're cooking at. So if you're cooking at medium or medium high, heat at that temperature. You'll take care of your pans, you'll get better quality cooking, and you'll be a whole lot happier. Thank you for watching. Look in the description box if you would, please. 
Right down there in that description box, I've got some links. Those are links to Texas Cooking Today and also to S.A. Trotter Arts. That is my company. That's the company that makes Texas Cooking Today. That's the company that um, does photography also. That's where I have the PDF version of my recipes for Texas Cooking Today. It's all right there, so satrotter.com. Please take a look at that. Please stick around for just a minute because I'm going to show you one of my recipes, show you why they're worth bothering with and why they're better than the other things you download off the internet. Thank you for watching. Folks, you have a good day. Bye-bye. On my website, I have my recipes. That's right, I sell my recipes on my website and I do that quite on purpose. I provide free tutorials here on YouTube. A lot of people sell their tutorials and give the recipes out for free. I would rather do a really good quality printed recipe like this, where you have a quality picture of what you're making, a description, what it is, and bullet pointing the ingredients and de de designing the ingredients so you know what ingredients are for what. Is it for the rolls or for the filling? You know, in this one at least. Also, all of my instructions are numbered. And often I'll do pictures depicting what needs to be done. My recipes also come with a place on the bottom for notes. It's a great way to do a recipe and to know how to do something when you've never tried it before. Please do me a favor, take a look at satrotter.com where I have my recipes in PDF format that I offer the public. Thank you very much and folks, you have a good day. Bye-bye.